The first powered airplane flights took place in 1903. By 1909, the President of the United States had already flown on an airplane. By the 19-teens, children were already flying on airplanes with barnstormers. By the 1920s, families were flying and taking vacations if they had the wherewithal to do it, and airlines had already formed. In spaceflight, we're 50 years into it, and we haven't even reached that stage of the barnstormers in the 1920s. My name is Dan Durda, and I've got a ticket to space. I'm Alan Stern, and I've got two tickets to space. I had a third ticket, but I gave it to Dan. We're going to take a group of researchers, and we're going to prepare them, body and soul, framework of mind, for the realities of spaceflight. Research is important. Research in space is the ultimate. We're pioneers. Groundbreaking a new profession, scientists that fly in space. It's going to be a lot of high performance, at the edge of space, Mach 1 fun. This is Barnstorming the Space Frontier. When Spaceship One, Burt Rutan's group, won the X Prize in 2004, that can be thought of in a lot of ways analogous to the Wright brothers' first flight. Space tourism is certainly the vehicle that's going to expand access to space. There are a wide range of commercial companies out there right now, today, that are building spaceships. With launch bases strewn not just across the United States, but across the world. It's a revolution. These vehicles are going to be very much in demand uh, from the research community as well. But many researchers say, you know, maybe I don't want to be among the first to fly. How do you convert a scientist who's used to sitting behind a computer most of his life to somebody who's doing active research at the edge of space? We think that opens up a new kind of profession, something we call commercial payload specialists. We're trying to put together something no one's ever done, their own astronaut training program. NASTAR and the Southwest Research Institute uh, put together a little program to do that. We uh, went and visited them and saw how sophisticated their facilities are and asked the question, can we bring along some of our best friends because we really want to break open this market for suborbital researchers. The first stage in this course is high altitude physiology training that uh, will demonstrate the effects that high altitude flight, uh, the lack of oxygen in the thin upper atmosphere can have on your body. Centrifuge runs to acclimatize uh, to the G levels and the ascent profiles, descent profiles on these, on these vehicles. Have some classroom studies that go along with the physiological effects. We're bringing along uh, uh, a couple folks from the press. We're going to be Twittering from the course. We're going to be blogging from the course, not just ourselves, but everyone, because we want to get the word out. We want people to be excited and uh, graduate the first class of potential uh, suborbital payload specialists ever. That group of people who have gone through the physiological training uh, will themselves become sort of ambassadors to the remainder of the community. When people come back from having flown in space, you can tell there's a, there's a profound change in the way they view the planet and they view themselves. In all the 50 years of human spaceflight, there's just barely been 500 people who've been launched into space. We're talking about launching thousands, if not tens of thousands, of space tourists every year, and then researchers. And I think when these people see and experience the beauty, the awe of flying above the atmosphere, and seeing that thin blue line. I think it's gonna really revolutionize the way people on this planet not only think about our place on this planet, but how they interact with each other.